All right, my friends. So where we left off last time was just talking about the uh, significant fees uh, for mortality and expense on variable annuities on top of the various riders that you can uh, choose if you show if you so desire. Um, but that's just to be given. <laughs> you ready for part two of this? Ah, I'm sure these are all disclosed, right? When you buy them, the fees, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, let's dive right into this and uh, don't forget to subscribe down below. Uh, thumbs up, comments, the whole thing is helpful. And this is just New York Life. I'm just picking on them. I'm going to pick on, a, I forgot the company here in just a, a second, the third video when I go down the whiteboard and show you the performance from 2004 to the end of 2018. And uh, you can just how you want to uh, stick your head in the toilet, take a plunger and flush and plunge at the same time, never to be seen from again, because it's uh, it's just absurd. All right, so let's dive right into this. Did I say subscribe and thumbs up? I can't remember if I did or not. Uh, if not, subscribe and thumbs up and comments too. All right, so let's get my big mug uh, minimized. All right, so here we go to New York Life, the prospectus. Uh, and that's what I was just looking at before, the New York Life plus variable annuity uh, prospectus and a statement of additional information, what SAI stands for. And you can read all that to your reading content. In fact, I, I think it was, how many, let's see. Yeah, I can't remember how many pages. It, I'm just curious. Let's see how many pages this guy is. Because I mean, this is a thing about the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commissions. It's 142 pages, my friends. I just no one's gonna read. I just I don't know why. We're just it's so silly. I mean, we're gonna have this out there to cover every single thing under the guise that we're being protected from these. You know, I mean, I mean, what could be snake oil salesmen? I mean, just come on, SEC. No one's reading that crap. You know, no one is. Uh, so well, I mean, just let's just have a two pager say this is what you're gonna get. This is what it costs. That's it. And say it could be anywhere in between. It could be that I just why do we have 146 pages? No one reads it. It's all lawyer employment. We know that. I mean, it's just the idea that the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission or FINRA is out there looking for you, mom and pop, grandpa, uh, grand, uncle, grandpa. Uh, again, there's old Josh at Heritage Wealth Planning using uncle, grandpa cartoons combined with uh, significant financial planning. Where else do you get that on YouTube, my friends? Only here. Only here. You think my man Dustin Tibbetts over at Jazz Wealth, who I'm a big fan of, now you should subscribe to him. He can combine Uncle Grandpa with financial planning? No. I think my man Jeff Rose, who I love and you should subscribe to him, can combine Uncle Grandpa with financial planning? No, it's only here. This is unique. <laughs> anyway, they're not protecting these guys, uh, grand, uh, Grandpa Jones and Grandma Jones, uh, from the whatever the, the risks that they perceive as some snake oil salesman out there, they, all this stuff doesn't protect anybody other than making sure the employer, the uh, lawyers have jobs. It's nuts. All right, so I'm not going to talk about the prospectus. We already did that. So here's all their underlying fund documents, all right? Uh, and these are the funds that they offer. You see American funds, BlackRock, huh, BlackRock. You see Columbia, you see Delaware, you see Fidelity Contra Fund. And that's what we're going to look at here uh, right now. We're going to look at the Fidelity Contra Fund uh, because I'm a big fan. And then we're going to look at another fund, the Mainstay Fund, uh, because what my guy has, who I'm working with here in Georgia, the bulk of his portfolio of the initial couple hundred thousand he had put in in 2015 is in one of these Mainstay funds. But it does have some Fidelity Contra Fund. So let's just take a gander, shall we? I don't know if I, yeah, the main, at the Fidelity Contra Fund. And let's see what we got. Hmm. What's this going to show? The Fidelity VIP Contra Fund. And I don't know what VIP stands for. That might, that, that's uh, typically when you see another uh, acronym on top of the name, Fidelity Something Contra Fund or American Something uh, Growth and Income Fund. That usually means it's a variable annuity. So let's uh, see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Can I? I don't see how I could right there, maybe. Uh, find out. Hmm. Yeah, what if I do like this? That make hey, there we go. Sweet. All right. So here's a Fidelity Contra Fund. Let me get rid of that. Kaboom. Uh, Contra Fund, VIP Contra Fund. Um, and I'm going to show you. All right. So there's the annual operating expenses, 0.87. Service class uh, two, 0.87, 12B1 uh, fee, distribution fee to make their salesman uh, that pays them. And all right, look, I have, no, I have no problem with this as long as it's fully disclosed, none whatsoever, and not disclosed just like, 
you know, some behind the bush thing. It's, I mean, I want up front, up front. Absolutely. This is what it costs you. <sighs> now, so the, the class two has a 25 basis points, 12B1 and a 54 basis points management fee. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, what if they were going to show us the performance? Yeah, here we go. So let's take a look and we're going to look at Bill Danoff, right? He's still the manager and uh, he's got Gene Park as a co-manager. That tells me Bill has hired Gene to take over the fund when Bill retires because he's been running this for a long, long time. I'm sure he's a pretty wealthy man. Now, he's made a lot of people out of money. I don't have any qualm with that, but you make more money certainly as a portfolio manager at Fidelity than most likely you would at Vanguard. Uh, but I, hey, look, I got no problem. That Bill Danoff has earned his fee because he's made a lot of people very wealthy. All right. So that's not what I, so I want to kind of show you here. Uh, this is the year over year returns, uh, but I want to actually show you, does it give us a 10 year past 10 years as of that's So let's go over here though. I want to show you something here. All right. So here's the Fidelity Contra Fund, FCNTX, FCNTX. I'm going to write this down, NTX. And what you'll notice here is that it returned 13.89% a year going back to 2000, uh, from 2018 for the previous 10 years. And I think I have it up here someplace where I show the performance of that fund. Oh, man, I had it. Yeah, right here. Okay, you ready? So remember, Fidelity Contra Fund, we see 10 years at uh, the end of 2018 is averaged 13.89%. All right. You with me so far? All right. So let's go down to New York Life's Contra Fund. Uh, New York Life Contra Fund. Fidelity Contra Fund right here. And what we'll see here is over the last 10 years, it has averaged 10.92. Hmm. Very interesting. And that's as of 2018. Now that's updated monthly. We can do updated quarterly up here if we shall choose, which is fine. Or is it got to go down? Let's do updated quarterly. I mean, the yeah, updated quarterly and updated monthly it really doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Um, uh, all right. Well, this give me a hard time. So what is this quarterly? There we go. So Fidelity, oh man, Fidelity Contra Fund updated quarterly. That's monthly. Let's go to quarterly. Bear with me just a second, me amigos. There we go. Updated quarterly right Man, this thing is giving me a hard time. Uh, it, all right, there we go. I was getting ready to freaking uh, see. You can see 10.92 if it's updated quarterly. So right, at the end of the day, as of the end of 2031, uh, to, uh, 31 December 2018, this was only giving us, uh, can you all see that? It was only giving us 10.92%. Uh, whereas we go to here, the Fidelity Contra Fund by Fidelity was giving us 13.89. What's the difference? I don't know. That's a pretty significant difference, is it not? I, I literally don't know because they're only charging 0.25 as a 12B1 fee on top of what the Fidelity Contra Fund charges. So let's take a look at the Fidelity Contra Fund. Uh, in fact, let's see, FCNTX. Let's go to FCNTX. And we're going to go to fees. All right. So the fees on Contra Fund are what? Let's see what they got here. Expense ratio 0.74. So the expense ratio on the fees of Contra Fund are about the same as they were on uh, the Fidelity one here. If I can go back on the Fidelity fee, which was point, uh, where was it? Uh, point eight, just a little bit more than that, 0.87. So, I mean, what's the differential? I, I literally do not know in terms of the fund itself because it's the same folks, I imagine, running the same money, right? I don't know. But one has got a significant less performance over 10 years than the other. So let's just look at this. Uh, this is a year over year. And we're going to look at uh, year over year performance. Let's see if it gives us this on uh, on mornings. Oh, this is straight from Fidelity. Annual returns. Let's see if it gives us. In, uh, it doesn't give us. In, yeah, there we go. So in 2010, the Contra Fund was up 16.93. In 2010, the Contra Fund from the VIP shares was up 17.22. Hmm, interesting. In 2011, the Contra Fund was down 0.14, not much. In 2011, this guy was down 2.53. Okay. Uh, in 2017, the Contra Fund at the variable annuity was up 21.88. In 2017, the Contra Fund through uh, the regular uh, Fidelity one was up 32.21. Hmm. 
Interesting, is it not? In 2013, we were up 34.15. In 2013, they were up 30.9. Pretty big divergence there. 2012, we were up 16.26. 2012, they were up uh, 16.42. So there's a significant 8.04 in 2016. We were up 3.36. So how do we get the huge divergence? 2009, 29.23, we were up. 2009, they're up 35 point. I mean, just, we're, I don't get it. We're, why is this so different? Now, I imagine it's, I literally have no idea. Is there some kind of different investments they're choosing? I do not know the answer to that. I don't know. But all I know, according to this, according to New York Life and Fidelity's own research, the Fidelity Contra Fund, naked by itself, without any insurance uh, on top of that, averaged, we can see uh, 13.89. The Fidelity Contra Fund through the New York Life thing did not average 13.89. It averaged, I had it up here. Uh, where was it? Where was it? It averaged, it was less than like 10 point something. I forgot what it was. Oh, it's over here. It was averaged uh, 10.92. What is, I mean, what's, yeah, what's, the, I don't get the difference. I just don't understand it. And if I don't understand it, um, do you? I don't. So what's that about? All right, but that it doesn't end there. I mean, so that's that's my huge concern there. It doesn't end there. You're still paying 12B1 fee. And I, look, 12B1 fee is just a guy to maintain your account. You're basically paying your guy 25 basis points a year on this fund in which for their, for your broker, your advisor, to theoretically service the account. That's supposed to be the way he services it as an incentive. All right, but, that, but that, that's just one thing. The other thing I want to show you, though, is this guy right here. All right, so this is the main... Um, uh, let's see. Let's get rid of this. This is the mainstay uh, moderate allocation fund from New York Life, right? And this guy had the bulk of his holdings in the mainstay moderate allocation fund. And I want to show you, uh, all right, moderate allocation. Let's see, mainstay moderate right there, moderate allocation fund. All right, this is this is just where it pains me to watch. All right, so uh, let's look at this guy here. Uh, my guy has. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. All right. So this is a uh, portfolio seeks long term growth of capital and secondarily income. And secondary current income. Uh, management fees uh, point uh, management fee none. OK. Management fee none. 0.25 is the uh, distribution 12B1 fees. But they have 0.93 portfolio fund fees and expenses. Huh. That's interesting. So 1.2 is the total fee on this acquired underlying portfolio fund fees and expenses 0.93. So if you're looking directly as a management fee, you think this fund's pretty cheap and you'd be wrong. And they still got 0.25. So 1.2% is the fee for this. Oh, my friends, it doesn't stop there though. So let's see what this is. Oh, the portfolio is a fund of funds, meaning that it seeks to achieve its investment objective by investing primarily in mutual funds and exchange traded funds managed by New York Life or its affiliates. Oh, isn't that uh, ironic? So let's take a look here. So this is their ad allocation, 45% U.S. equities, 15% international equities, total equities, 60% and total inc fixed income, 40. So let's just take a gander, shall we? And see what these guys are invested in. Here it is from their perspective. So this is page 23 of 76. Affiliate investment companies. <laughs> So this is what this fund's invested. It's a fund of fun. The IQ Chalkin U.S. Large Cap ETF, the IQ UQ Chalkin U.S. Small Cap ETF, the Mainstay Cushing MLP. Look at all this stuff. The M Mainstay Map Equity Fund, the Mainstay VP Unconstrained Bond Fund. I mean, they got uh, I mean, it just what the hell is that? Uh, look at all this stuff. So let's just take a gander. I have no clue who the mainstay, uh, let's know. I want to look at the IQ Global Resources ETF. I don't know who those people are. So I want to find out who's the global resources. And we're going to go to old, let's just go to finance. Uh, actually, no, what we'll do, we'll go to Google. Mainstay, it's not mainstay, it's, uh, who is this? This is uh, IQ Global Resources ETF. Let's see what these guys are. I literally have no idea. IQ says they're smart, right? So let's just see if we can't cut and paste this. Boink ETF. 
There we go. We're going to cut and paste this. Go to our friends over at Google who are not keeping track of my search. I, they tell me that they are being, uh, they, they provide, they protect my information. And my friends, if you believe that I have some beachfront, oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you, uh, that I bought off my man, George Strait. All right. So let's see what the, uh, IQ Global Resources ETF is. I literally have no idea. Uh, but my guy is invested in that, as apparently many, many other people are, because it's part of the New York Life investment. And let's see what we got here. All right, so we're going to go down to their um, their holdings. They got Morgan Stanley, a Treasury Institutional. They got some China. All I really want to see is their fee structure, which we don't see here. Uh, fees? Oh! <laughs> So they have an expense ratio of 0.75. Is that on top of what the mainstay moderate allocation has, which is 0.93? I literally have no idea. I have none whatsoever. <laughs> ah, isn't that awesome? Total operating fund operating expenses, 0.78. But it's an ETF. It's cheap, right? Ew. Oh, nuts. Nuts. All right. So let's see what these guys are. Here's a mainstay stay moderate allocation fund. Uh, here's a Jay Yoon and Jonathan Sweeney and Paul Christensen all getting money. And then Amit so Sony, all industry experience, 10 years. Um, now, what's the fees on the main st stay moderate allocation? Where I said about that, what did I say? 0.93 plus a 12B1 fee. Uh, and here's their portfolio. We already talked about the, all the different holdings that they have. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fees and expenses. Let's take a look at the fees and expenses. They're saying 1.12 is a net expense ratio. I literally have no clue on this whatsoever, and neither do you. I mean, it's just other, no other way around that. One of the holdings, according to New York Life's own prospectus, and this is the prospectus, mainstay moderate allocation service class, uh, is the uh, IQ, uh, uh, whatever this thing is, the IQ, uh, I can't, I, Global Resources ETF. And it has its own 0.75. I, I, look, I'm sure there's some re, uh, redundancy there, and I'm sure there's some rebates. I frankly have no clue at all, none whatsoever. But at the end of the day, what do we know? We know there are expenses on top of expenses on top of expenses. All these people are getting paid somehow. Let's take a look at the old mainstay sh short duration high yield fund, shall we? Uh, let's see, see what we got here. Um, <laughs> so... It, this makes me laugh. And I'm hoping you're going to kick out of this, too, because this is just mind boggling. All right. So let's take a look at what the Oh, and so according to I don't even know what this is, this is off Google. So I'm not sure where they're getting it from. But their expense ratio on a short duration high yield fund is 0.79. Oh, you're not making money if you're paying 0.79 as an expense ratio on a short bond fund. It, it's, it's just you're not making money. <sighs> All right. So how much of this is redundant? How much of this is being rebated? I frankly have no clue. You don't have any clue. I imagine your, your advisor has no clue. I bet the CFAs who run this have no clue. I bet you could call all over New York life and find out. You'll get someone who thinks he knows and they say, okay, let me hang up the phone and talk to some lady who sits next to him and she'll say something different. All I know you have fees on top of fees on top of fees. You have many hands in the cookie jar, which is your hard-earned money. And I'm going to show you next time how this is going to hurt you in your overall performance. I'm telling you right now, it's going to make you sick to your stomach. Now, are there some benefits? I'll show you what the benefit would be here. Absolutely. It will make you sick to your stomach, though, when you figure out all these fees. Don't forget, these are just the fun fees. So let's just say you have an average of 1.2 fun fee, which apparently is what we're looking at here. Because you got the 12B1 fee to pay the guy to service the account who already got paid by selling you as a commission. And then you got the expense, you got the uh, expense ratios on top of that. And then you got all the various expense ratios of the funds that they're putting you in and the various ETS, which again uh, is legion. I mean, look at all these things. It just is insane. All right. So you got that. So you got, well, let's say 1.2. All right. Then you got the basic M&E charge of 1.65. Again, that's what New York Life is showing us perspectives, which I did last video. And then you got the various uh, riders that you can buy on top of that, which, you know, 0.75 to 1.3, depending on how much New York Life charges, we'll just say a flat 1% on the various riders. So we got 1.3, 1.65, another 1% or so. You're all in 4%. You're not making money. 
And I'll show you what exactly what I mean by how you're not making money next time as we sit there and go over to this uh, three part series on the fees on top of fees on the top of fees that variable annuities have is bad. All right. So don't forget to subscribe, comment, questions, the whole thing down below. And we'll see you in part three here as I go downstairs to the whiteboard. Thanks, guys.